Well, hi there. If you're wondering why I'm dressed like Mr. Rogers, you probably haven't seen the first part of this competition. You should totally check that out. It's right here, and it was pretty darn legendary. But now I'm going to give you some spoilers, so hopefully you're already over there. Because after the first 25 points, our leaders are the non-tetrapod fish with 17 points, followed closely by the non-avian reptiles with 16 points. Arthropods are next with 13, followed by mammals with 12. Birds have only 9 points, and surprisingly, amphibians are in last with only 8 points. But the majority of the points are still out there, and as we saw in our last competition, anything can happen. Well, except for a crocodilian comeback and a best pet reptile competition. It's almost like they don't even want to be pets. But now, I'm going on a trip. Or am I? At number six, we have birds. Because if you have a pet bird, you probably aren't. You will definitely need someone to care for them, probably multiple times a day. At number five, mammals. Mammals are a bit better than birds, but endotherms use a lot of energy. This means a lot of eating, drinking, and pooping. Generally, they need daily and sometimes multiple times a day care. That said, some are relatively easy to take with you on a trip compared to anything else on this list. And number four, amphibians. It isn't difficult to train someone to care for your amphibian, but because they're prone to drying out, they generally can't be left for too long. And number three, fish. If you have an automatic feeder that you trust, weekend trips are no problem for most fish tanks. And it isn't hard to train a friend to feed your fish. Water changes and other tank maintenance can be a problem if you're going to be gone for more than a week or so. And number two, reptiles. In some cases, you fill up the water bowl and have a nice weekend. Most snakes and turtles will be fine for a week or so. Much longer and you will need someone to stop by to fill the water bowls and maybe spot clean. Lizards will need to be fed more often, but reptiles are great pets if you travel from time to time. And at number one, arthropods. Obviously not all arthropods are this easy, but many of the common pets like cockroaches and tarantulas can easily be left for a week or more without you needing to worry about a thing. Yeah, but it lives too long or not long enough. At number six, we have birds. Some birds can live forever. Do your grandkids want a parrot? And many won't live long at all. Either way, it's a total bummer. And number five, mammals. They are either so much work that they are far too long of a commitment or they are basically a member of your family that only lives like 15 years or more like two if it's a rat. And number four, arthropods. Tarantulas live like the perfect amount of time. But one of the big problems with keeping many arthropods are their short lifespans. And number three, fish. Most fish that you would get for your tank will live a few years with proper care. This means that you have a good opportunity to try on many different fish over the lifespan of your tank. At number two, amphibians. Amphibians tend to live a few more years than most fish. Some, like the African bullfrog, can live for many decades, but they aren't necessarily heirloom pets. And at number one, reptiles. How long do you want it to live? There's a reptile for that. Most pet reptiles live in that one to two decade sweet spot. Some don't live very long at all, and some live much longer, so you have a lot of options. Am I gonna kill this thing? At number six, birds. It's very likely that you will. At number five, fish. You're gonna kill some of them, almost certainly. At number four, arthropods. Again, there are some really solid options, but most arthropods, especially terrestrial arthropods, are not great at surviving long-term in captivity. And number three, amphibians. There are many ways to kill an amphibian, but it's also very preventable. And number two, reptiles. Reptiles as a group are a really hardy lot, provided with proper temperatures and the other requirements of life. This doesn't apply to all, but many are very hardy. And at number one, mammals. If for no other reason than that they need about the same things that you need, and many are highly adapted to living with humans. Mammals are fairly easy for us to keep alive if you intend to do so. An accessory or a lifestyle? 
Now, a few people seem to have an issue with this category before. But the reality is that your life doesn't need to revolve around every pet. A rose-haired tarantula is something that adds joy to your life, but doesn't cause your life to change dramatically. A monkey is a new way of living. And at number six, we have birds. I'll concede that birds like chickens and quail are minor lifestyle changes compared to most other pet birds. But this group is high maintenance, man. At number five, mammals. Mammals can be like adding a kid to your family, sometimes literally. At number four, fish. Dealing with water quality and tank maintenance are not trivial. Number three, amphibians. Not too bad except for needing to get occasional feeders and frequent misting. Number two, reptiles. Snakes in particular really shine here. A reptile can be a lifestyle if you want that, but they can also be something that you can not stress about for a couple of days at a time if life gets away from you. Your dog won't put up with that. And at number one, arthropods. Oh my goodness. Apparently, you cannot even know that you have a pet spider for weeks and it'll still be okay. Dinja, dinja, dinja. At number six, we have the mammals. Domestic mammals kill a lot of people. Part of this is because they're common, but part of it is that they are often large and full of weapons. At number five, reptiles. Some are venomous, and some are big enough to do some damage with a bite. At number four, arthropods. Again, some are venomous. At number three, birds. Most won't hurt you badly, but a, a few could hurt you. A few species have even killed someone. At number two, fish. Most fish that you would keep are totally harmless. A few are venomous and a few are large sharks. And at number one, amphibians. Look, if you can resist the urge to put them in your mouth or stick your hands in your mouth or eyes after handling them, you shouldn't have any problems. And that brings us to our 11th and final category, loud, smelly, or obnoxious. At number six, birds. Birds are pretty much the reason that loud, smelly, or obnoxious exists as a category. They are all of the above. At number five, mammals. Mammals really give birds a run for their money. When you are vocal and an endotherm, you're going to be loud, smelly, and obnoxious. At number four, fish. Fish are delightful, but filters are often loud and obnoxious, and water changes definitely get old after a while. At number three, reptiles. Reptiles are nowhere near as loud, smelly, or obnoxious as endotherms, and most don't require any maintenance as monotonous as water changes. But they can be loud, particularly if they are tortoises. They can be smelly, though if you stay on top of cleaning, they usually aren't. But when Gus Gus drops a poop, you know about it, Patreon. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> At number two, amphibians. Amphibians, particularly frogs, can be very loud, but not an I want something from you human kind of way. It's more of an endearing I'm looking for love kind of way. Yeah, it usually happens in the middle of the night, but I have never been annoyed by the call of a frog. Then again, I met someone that is annoyed by whales not very long ago, so you never know. <laughs> but they really aren't smelly or obnoxious at all. And at number one, arthropods. Some insects can be very loud. Crickets are not cute when you have a few dozen of them chirping all night. But these really aren't the arthropods that people keep as pets. Frankly, if you keep crickets, it's probably to feed your reptiles or amphibians, so that's their problem. The reality is that most pet arthropods are about as silent, odorless, and unobtrusive as it is possible to be as a living animal. And that is why they win this category. And that brings us to the moment of truth. Are reptiles actually the best pets? I still don't know. Mr. Jason, would you please sum the scores? I gotta get some paper. All right. Are reptiles actually the best pets? Okay, okay, okay. All right, I would just like to take a moment while we wait for Jason to sum these scores and give us the absolute moment of truth to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who make this sort of content possible. Thank you guys for all that you do for us. 
you'd like to support this channel and content like this in the future, please consider checking out our Patreon. But now, Mr. Jason, for the moment of truth. In order of the animals that you listed. As originally presented, as not, not in order by score. Correct, as okay. originally presented. We have reptiles with a score of 37. Birds with a score of 12. <laughs> <laughs> we got fish, Who's close? fish with a score of 32. The reptiles passed up the fish? We've got amphibians with a score of 29. Mammals with a score of 21. Arthropods with a score of 34. Woo! I have chills. <laughs> For science has just revealed that reptiles are the best pets. Oh my goodness. Uh, it, it is true. I don't think there's any denying it. Um, close behind them were the arthropods in second, which, you know, I think there's a reason we branched into those next. Uh, fish in third, amphibians in fourth, the mammals in, in fifth, and that, those first five are kind of a tight grouping, and then somehow <laughs> the birds were just not even close. They, uh, it's like they want to just be flying out in nature instead of being pets, it almost appears. I honestly was very nervous because I had no idea where reptiles were going to fall in this. You know, they, they very rarely took the top honors in any one category, but they also were never the worst in, in anything. And, and most, most other things are sometimes the best, sometimes the worst. Sometimes being the best in one category was like a direct trade-off with being the best in another category. And, and overall, you know, and this is why I love keeping reptiles, to be perfectly honest, because I love everything. I let, you know, like uh, people are shocked to find this out about me, but I love every animal. Like I, I am so into every, especially group of animals. There's no group of animals where I hate them all, except for mosquitoes. And, um, and but, but most cool animals make really lousy pets, especially wild animals. Reptiles are sort of a big exception where a huge number of wild reptiles make very reasonable animals to keep and interact with on a regular basis. And so that's why I love them as pets so much. And then we can see, um, as long as you're not an endotherm, there's probably a decent chance that you, you know, there are also a lot of decent representatives, but reptiles, they do take the cake. I stand by this. What do you think? What do you think of these results? Which, which categories would you have ordered differently and would it have changed the final outcome uh, i'd like to know but thank you guys for being here with me to discover once and for all that reptiles are the best pets as always like and subscribe and we'll see you real soon then again i met someone that is annoyed by whales not very long ago so you never know whales well, whales probably are if you keep them. I was, I was thinking who, of amphibians. Who was annoyed by whales? <laughs> so when I was in Niue, I met with a family, super cool, super cool family. They were wanting to start a family vlog. And they were wondering if that was a good idea. And I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> that'd be super cool. Because people watch family vlogs about families that are, are totally unexceptional. <laughs> and as much as they didn't recognize how unusual their life is on the remotest of habitated Pacific islands, their life is super unusual and super cool. In fact, the hardest thing is just the fact that the island which ate our sound equipment also eats all electronics. And so having a functional computer and stuff like that is difficult to maintain over a long period of time. Anyway, their life is so unusual and cool. And yeah, while we were talking, um, the, 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 the wife in the family, she started to complain about whales. <laughs> and they keep her up at night and they're always splashing and making noises. And stuff. I'm just like, this 
is a viral episode. The episode where you complain about whales. <laughs> no one has ever complained about whales. <laughs> <laughs> she was like genuinely so annoyed with the whales. <laughs> Stupid whales. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> it was seriously like they were street cats. That's what she was talking about. <laughs> Just stay up all night with their whale splashing and their whale noises. That's so cute. Stupid whales. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> You've got a whale on your computer. Stupid whales. <laughs>